I've uh, learned to tap into more of the nurturing side. You know, um, it doesn't come naturally when you're a mother. You have to learn how to allow your child to be themselves and they're all individually beautiful, <clears throat> which means they will portray something differently to the other. And um, I've gone through many things with my girls already. Um, there's a period where I was a single mom um, to my two eldest. Then I met my ex-husband and I was a single mom again before I got to start the show. Um, and through all of that, I got time to really understand what they struggled with. And you have no choice but to because, you know, um, you're all they got. So as, as hard as it was, the struggle that I had, um, I was fortunate to actually make time. I could make time. Um, and that's all they really want from a parent, you know, just to be heard. Um, just so they know that they can grow, not just be that afraid child even when they're in their adult years um but yeah that's that's definitely me for my household I've got six girls so I'm blessed to give it all differently and that yeah oh, nice. <laughs> yeah yeah it is important to break the cycle eh? yeah. like mm, do the work kids and that yeah. yeah I think just to add on so like I think I think that's something that's constantly happening happening I know for me growing up with my dad uh, my dad was very strict, so there was no talking about anything that didn't concern a child. If I wasn't contributing to it, then I wasn't asking questions because I'm not the one doing anything. But I think um, now, even as a mom, um, I'm having to come out of my shell to talk to my dad about things and to tell him why. Um, I think one of the things would be like mental health, how I might be feeling, what I might be going through. Um, I've had the privilege of living in the islands and that's not really something that's acknowledged like we acknowledge it here. And so that's a conversation that I'm having to break down to my dad. Um, I think so that he can get a sense of trust that I'm trying to get him to understand that he he's the person I'm coming to, that there's a sense of trust in both ways. And so even now as a mum, I'm a very strict mum, but I also have to hold myself back because I too want want that change because I think now with like a lot of things going on with our youths, um, I don't want to be that mum that hears about um, her son or her, her daughter um, not being able to come to me or losing their life because they couldn't come talk to me about something. So it's definitely... I hate calling it a stereotype, but I think it is a stereotype um, of things being labelled taboo when they shouldn't be because um, certain things we should be able to go talk to our parents about. If anything, it should be our parents that we should be, go, um, be able to go to talk about. So I think, yeah, I think at the moment I'm sort of in a cross line between the generation of my parents and my kids' generation to try and make that change so that when my when my kids get older, they can also then apply that on however they feel necessary. So Yeah. yeah. I actually just wanted to add on to the, the sis. Um, you mentioned that you're a strict parent because our dad was strict on you, and it's quite hard. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, I don't have kids on my own, but being an auntie... And auntie's perspective, having having the nieces and nephews come to you because they can't speak to the parents, it's like I feel like it's their way of their door to get to their parents. Um, if that makes sense, yeah. um, I have a lot of older nieces and nephews now that they come up to me and they talk to me because they can't talk to their parents. And for me being an auntie and seeing how they struggle with talking to their parents, because I did as well, um, I feel like that's my door of being like, hey, sis, um, I know you're trying to be, like, I know you're trying to do this and I know you're trying to do right by your kids um, and all of that. I'd, <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense, but yeah. I feel like I'm, the, I'm their door to get to their parents and that way it helps them to come out more. Um, but honestly, just being an auntie alone, I feel like just because I'm, I'm an auntie, I do see um, my kids growing up. Their kids are my kids, and I will always hold that. Um, and in saying that, it is hard for the younger generation to speak to their parents, but then trying to 
um, how would you say, what's your favorite word? Trying to speak life into them and saying, hey, it is okay to go to your parents. If you need someone there, I'm more than welcome to, you know. He didn't even answer my question, but I just had to look look at him. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like that's another way of, for the kids, the generation now to, you know, um, speak their mind and, you know, go talk to their parents just through their aunties or through people that they can just open up to easily, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. It's also like, it might be a good thing and a bad thing, but because we're yeah. Pacific Islanders, we we have this village mentality. You know, we live with large families. Yeah. Our cousins are more like brothers and sisters. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. it's not like the <laughs> Europeans. They're just the immediate family, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't have an extended <laughs> family like their own. Like They don't live in the village, so they have to talk to each other. Yeah, uh, yeah. Probably that's why they're, they're, they don't have, maybe they don't have these same problems, because they do talk to their parents because there's only them. They've got yeah, no one else to talk true. to. But with us islanders, you know, we got everyone we want to talk to, yeah. too, you know. And I think that's the thing. Um, I think now just hearing and listening, um, I remember growing up, my dad, um, so we weren't allowed to speak English at home. And we used to get hiding. <laughs> it would be like the smallest word, like it would be that, but if he catches you getting hiding. And he always used to say, And we always used to say, we live in New Zealand, why? But um, I think now in hindsight and just listening, <laughs> um, I think they were really trying to keep the um, authenticity of our culture yeah. as, as authentic as they possibly could because they knew that we were in a different environment and so how do we but it's interesting that you say that because if you go to Samoa yeah. um in my experience we had like it was myself my mom my stepdad and then we had the parents and the sisters and the brothers and their husbands and their wives and their kids and so we all lived in this one house so you know yeah. nothing that ever went on was ever if ever went unscathed or ever, ever went untouched because if something was going on here yeah the other folly over there <laughs> as well yeah. and we we're gonna deal with that now or, or just 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 leave it alone yeah. so i think um i think it's definitely a conversation that could go both ways i think we as younger generations need to have that courage to say or identify with ourselves if we really want to know who we are, where we come from, let's spark that conversation as scared, as scared as we are. And then even as parents, we need to be open to say, our kids are not going to get the knowledge from anywhere else, so we need to be open to share with them, to discuss with them why things are done a certain way or why things, you know, why things shouldn't be done a certain way. Um, so, yeah, it's, it sparks a lot of conversation, I think, but um, I think it's conversations that need to be had. So, like, you know what you're saying with Inky Pinky Ponky those are unique ways of touching on things that we've been keeping under the rug like you said or under the mat for way too long but we need to start bringing this up because I think then that heals like a lot of trauma trauma, like your generational trauma that needs to be broken because um as much as we want to stay staunch to who we are time is changing we need to be changing with the time whilst also remembering who we are where we come from so yeah yeah, that's I guess with my parents, um, I think I'm not the only one, but um, it's approaching to me, and having that space of trust, like, is it, is it a good thing if I should approach them about, or oh, hey, like, can you like teach me more Samoan in the language and stuff and the culture? But I guess I think that's always been a challenge to me sometimes, like. Whenever me and my mom have a conversation, it's always just strictly English, eh? But then she'll just remix it with some Samoans in between, you know what I mean? But it's like, if I was to speak Samoan to my mom, I I feel awkward. Because how I started to learn the language was through my, my nana, it was through my grandparents, because I stayed with them for a long time. Um, With my dad, it was different. Like, he, he would speak Samoan to me, but it was more the English to me because you know he maybe their mindset our parents mindset at the time was probably like oh I don't want to speak so I want to my kids because maybe they won't understand so I'll just speak it to them in English and that's probably why we are who we are right now and not knowing the language as as well and um you know I don't think I'm the only one you know that's gone through that situation um even to this day, man, like, whenever I see my mom speak English to her, she replies back in English, same with my dad. 
but it's um but it's it's but with me speaking Samoan, it's always with my grandparents. It's always like, oh, you know, this and that, blah blah blah. Of yeah, you know, you know, what do you want? Let me give my away, blah blah blah. And it it made me feel confident in speaking the language to them. But if I was just to speak it to my parents, I feel awkward because I was like, oh, because I'm so used, to, I'm so my sangi to speaking English to them, and that's just how I approach it. But if I was to speak Samoan to a Samoan worker of mine. They will look at me and they'll laugh and they'll be like, Tolu, no, come on, he doesn't know how to speak it properly or whatever. Like if I'll say something wrong, they'll laugh. Or when they say something fobbish, then I'll laugh. Be like, you're fob. They talk to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's where that's where it creates conflict is the language barrier. And that's the reason why the show is what's the difference between me and you? It's that. It's the language barrier. And the connection of you know the backstory behind it all so yeah